So I think the interesting part about the guy who got arrested at the Dallas car show is that it actually happened at the Dallas car show. He was, I think it was a vendor. He had, the way that they caught him wasn't because they thought the fake cards were fake. It was because he had too many of the cards. He had a hundred Michael Jordan rookie cards, which you know is really expensive by itself. He had a thousand plus LeBron James rookie cards of various uh, variants. And, you know, to my knowledge, they were pretty high quality proxies. And as long as you didn't, you know, the, the thing with these fake cards, Magic, Pokemon, otherwise, if you double sleeve them and then you put them in a hard case or, you know, a, you know, you know, a plastic case, one of those bigger plastic cases, it's kind of hard to tell, you know, because a lot of the problems that the cards have, what I find is the feel of the card. The feel of the card doesn't feel right. So the print is really easy to get correct. The printing machines today are much better than they were in 1987, 1989, eight, whenever Michael Jordan was a rookie. Uh, the printing machines today are much higher quality than they were in the Odin days with Black Lotus or Pokemon Charizard First Edition. So the printing quality is pretty, pretty sick, right? It's the cardboard they can't get right, the glue that puts the two backs together that they often don't get right because they don't, maybe sometimes they don't care and it takes too much effort to figure it out. In other cases, you know, it is just hard to get right because those were um, supplies that existed in quant mass quantities back then, but now with new technology, we no longer need those, those supplies. We have better ways to you know, put stuff together. So talking about this is very interesting because they happened at, and he ran, he definitely ran four feet. He was tackled, arrested and really fat because he's like fat. His folks kind of came out and you have to understand the people in this industry, you know, I was trying to buy that Charizard and it was sketchy as shit, you know, and eventually the Charizard sold. I offered 105 thank cash. I thank the Lord that he didn't take it because he was so greedy, but that card sold a week after I made that offer on eBay, same serial number, BGS 9.5. You can go on eBay and check it up for 7,300. And then another Charizard sold for 6,900 BGS 9.5, same uh, one nine free 9.5 subgrades. Now I did a little bit more research and I'm kind of wondering because there was t two different locations, right? And I kind of wonder if it's the same Charizard or if it was a fake Charizard that was being sold to me for cash. So eBay, if, if somebody sells you a fake card and you realize it's fake, easy to get your money back. eBay will always side on the buyer's side. So we saw that with the fake Black Lotus scam where a guy sells a real Black Lotus. It gets to a Nazi with 21 criminal convictions for exactly this, for basically scamming people online. And then that Nazi give, gives a really poor fake proxy. He drags Vintage Magic into it. I don't know why it's not a bigger deal that Vintage Magic was dragged into it because in the BBC, e, he would be an authenticator. So yes, clearly it's fake, but do you need to pay Vintage Magic $300 to tell you that when you, it's like an obvious fake? So, you know, he got the buyer, the, the Nazi got every single right. He did not have to give back the card. He did not have to give back the real card and he got refunded completely. So when you're a buy, when you're a buyer on eBay, it's really easy to get refunded if you bought a fake card. Now, if you're buying it in person, like I was now, I'm very, the more scams that come out, the more cautious I'm going to be in the future. I don't think I ever pay in cash. I think that is very unwise because one of those two copies I think is a scam because you don't try to sell something for 185,000 and then later just put it at auction and sell it for 7,300. And then a few days later, uh, another version of it, another number, another 9.5 sells immediately after in a different location for 6,900. Just be aware, there are a lot of scammers out, out there and the more money that gets involved and the more times people talk about community, it's a kind of wedge, if you guys remember wedge, he's always talking about community and charity and you know, life. What, what was that charity that he was always big on? But like, how do you know he gave the money away? Like, it doesn't make any sense. He just kept the money himself, guys. Like, obviously the medical emergency thing, I think was way over-exaggerated. 
and he probably didn't even have a medical emergency now that I think about it, because he just he somehow recovered to the point that he could flee the country. That's exactly what he did. He recovered, got paid on GoFundMe, and then fled the country to the UK. And he was always talking about community. I love community, charity. I find that whenever somebody in the, because we're not in the charity industry, we're in the business industry. We're trying to make margins and things. When your margins are tight, the last thing that you normally talk about is charity and giving back. And I get it's it's good to talk in social media. People love talking about charity, but how many of those people who talk about charity actually donate a single dime? I would say probably 1% of them or less. Because it's really easy. I can make a video, hey, you know, I, I might be giving to charity in the future. I just leave out the mic. I'm going to donate $5 million to charity. And then I cannot do it. <laughs> Who's going to hold me accountable? Nobody. But just like, you know, backyard breaks, as soon as they say charity, we're going to donate this money to charity. There's no receipts. There's no follow-up. There's nothing, right? Bye, guys.